Hello everyone, welcome to another video on uh, PLC programming using Kalisys. In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a retentive on delay timer. For some reason, the Kalisys doesn't include retentive on delay timers, it includes the, the normal on delay timers, off delay timers, and pulse timers, but not the retentive on delay timer, okay, which is available with some other platforms. Over here, I will show you how to create your own retentive Andre timer function block in a simple way. Okay, it will be a simple one. I will not consider all the details, but it will work for normal purposes. In the main uh, program that I have as the PLC underline PRG, I have chosen CFC as the programming language and I have inserted a function block with the name of rt on, RT on in it and an instant of it is rt on underline one and that's a function block that i have created okay so after uh, creating the project you should know this already so i i have clicked on the add object and in the in the add object uh, menu i have selected pou and for pou i have chosen the function block and I have set the name as RT on. Okay, so I don't do all these steps such that it doesn't take too long for the video. So I have created that function block. I have given it the name of RT on, and you can see it over here as well. Here we have the internal structure for the RT on. I will explain different lines of the code that I have, and I've chosen the ladder diagram as the programming language. But obviously you can use the other standard PSC programming languages as well. I wanted to, to, to have the retentive on delay timer having the proper inputs and proper outputs. You can see that it receives the T in which is in the form of a Boolean value. I've given a variable as the timer input, timer start over here and it's used as a T underline in input of the of the retentive on delay timer. Then the next input is the preset time. I have given the input delay time, which is over here. And initially I have set the value of 10 seconds for that. I can change it later obviously. And then we have the timer reset input, which is in the form of a Boolean variable as well. And it is indeed here, timer reset. So the, the function block RT on will have three inputs. Two of them are Boolean and one is the time. The data type is time and it has two outputs. The first one is the RT on underline out, which is a Boolean variable. And I have associated it with the timer done output here. And the second output is the RT on underline ET, which is the elapsed time of the timer. Okay, now we can go and have a look at uh, what we have inside the RT on block. Uh, or maybe let me just quickly explain what I have, what I have in the visualization. Or here we have the R timer input in the form of a switch. And you can see that it is associated with the timer start variable, which is here, timer start. Then the next switch is related to the timer reset. So with this, I will be able to reset the timer. And over here, we have the timer out in the form of a light bulb. You can obviously have uh, a field showing the RT on elapsed time as well, or a field to receive the preset time for the timer. But those are something that you can find in my other videos. I'm not going to explain them over here. So if you have a look inside the, the RT on function block that I have created, you can see that it is con it consists of three indeed main rungs. In the first rung, what is done is that initially we check that this is indeed used whenever we want to firstly initiate the, the timer, the retentive timer. So RT on underline out is the output of the timer. Initially, if it's not true, meaning that the timer is not done, 
we check the value that we have for the t underline p t underline temp. This is a temporary variable that I have created. And initially it will be zero once we call the, the timer for the first time. So if it is equal to zero, then what we do? We move the value that we have in t underline pt and that t underline pt is the input to our timer, the preset time input for our timer. We will move that value into the temporary preset time of the timer. This is important to do because without this, once the timer is reset, we will not be able to, to turn on the timer again. You can try to create this and then uh, in one trial just disable this wrong of the code and, and see what happens. Okay, so this is indeed used in order to make the timer being able to work after we have reset the timer or the first time that we call the timer. Then in the next rung, we do the main indeed uh, timing task. You can see that the timer in t underline in which is one of the inputs to the function block is used in the form of a normal contact and the, once we have the input coming once the input is true and the timer is not done then we need to have the timer timing but we need to manage how our timer which is that we are using an a normal on un, delay timer over here at the core how its preset time value should be set Okay, so over here, the, the main idea is to provide a proper value for the preset time val input of the undelay timer that we are using. For that, I have added these two branches in it. In the first one, we check the rising edge of the input in this signal. When we receive the rising edge of the input signal, the preset time of the timer will be loaded with the temporary value that we have here. So first time that we call the timer in it, before this, in the first round, the temporary value that for the preset value of the timer is loaded with the input value, okay, for the preset time. Then in the next round, at the rising edge, that value will be moved into or will be written into the press it time of t on underline zero okay and then uh, when rising edge happens we don't have the falling edge so this will be neglected and the timer will start timing with the preset time that we just have set in the last branch over here what we do is to uh, prepare in it the elapsed time of the timer the elapsed time of the timer, of the RT timer, in the retentive timer, will be obtained by using the elapsed time of the timer at each time plus a temporary value. And that temporary value is indeed determined here when we have the falling gauge. Then when the input goes false, we will have the falling gauge. When the falling gauge happens, obviously this branch will be neglected because we don't have the rising edge when the falling edge happens the the timer will also stop the t on underline zero will stop because its input will become zero let's say then at the falling edge we do these two simple mathematics the first thing is that we do the subtraction of t on underline zero the preset time which and the first time is equal to the input value for the function, we subtract elapsed time of the timer from that and then write the result into the temporary preset time. And keep in mind that next time that we have the rising edge, this temporary preset time will be written into the preset time of the timer. The second calculations that we do here is the addition and that's used in order to keep track of the elapsed time of the counter the, the, the accumulated elapsed time let's say so rt the the temporary value which was initially zero is added to the actual elapsed time of the t on underline zero and then it is written into that temporary variable again 
and you can see that here that temporary value is added to the elapsed time of the timer and that gives us the elapsed time for the retentive on delay timer. So the input to the timer can go true and false, true and false until the elapsed time, the total el accumulated elapsed time it becomes equal to the, the preset time input of the function block and then the on delay timer here will become true outputs output of the timer will become true and then we just set the output of the retentive timer and the last line that we have for the code is over here we have the timer reset input and it's associated with this switch here when the timer reset is pressed is true then the rt on output will be reset okay it will be reset and it will remain resetted until it is set again but we in order to have the timer working we need to move this uh, timer reset back to zero okay or back to fast because otherwise it will uh, it will reset the rt on all the time and our timer will not be able to to function and the last thing here is that we have the branch so when the timer reset becomes true we move zero seconds to the temporary value for the elapsed time if you don't have this in the, the accumulated elapsed time for the rt on underline et will increase over time so it will keep track of the previous values so each time we need to set it to zero move zero to that value whenever we press the timer reset and in that way the timer will work properly so I hope the explanation that I provided would help you to understand. Otherwise, you can indeed uh, create this simple function on your own and go through the details. And here you can see the, the input variables for the function block, the output variables and the temporary variables that we have, in, internal variables for the function that we have. All right, I think that's enough in terms of the explanation of the code now let's have a look at how the how the program will perform so here we go we just play it uh, you can see the the values in it here so initially timer input was false i set it to true and i hope over here you can see the elapsed time it reached 10 seconds and as a result the output became true so now if i turn on the input nothing will change eh? because the output of the timer is already set for the retentive on the timer we need to reset it first pressing the reset its output has become fast but now if i press the the timer input indeed it should not work as long as the timer reset is true now i set it back to false let's have a look here so you can see that the elapsed time is four seconds for now we, we need 10 seconds so I can make it true you can see that seven seconds uh, okay I think I I need to do some modifications because at seven seconds let's try it again All right, now in 10 seconds, it just turned on. Okay, so they, they, there might be some small indeed modifications needed over here in order to make the, the retentive on delay timer working perfectly, but I guess you just got the main idea. So you, you need to reset it once reset. It's next time that we turn it on, the input, the 
the elapsed time starts also from zero. So that's the, the basic way in which the retentive underlay timer should work. And as I mentioned again, there might be some small modifications that are needed in order to 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 have the timer working perfectly. For example, over here we can indeed introduce the timer reset input. So as long as timer reset input is not true because when it becomes true it means that we we are resetting the timer and therefore the the timer should not work so something like that should, might be also needed but again i guess you you have got the the main idea of how the retentive timer in the retentive underlay timer in the codices environment could work now you can see that the The timer starts from zero again okay all right so that's all for this video i hope you have enjoyed it thank you for watching and see you in another video soon bye for now